guys, today's video will be question and answer. Like I said last week, I have questions that you ask me in the comments section. And I'll also show you my complete, and then I'll just reach the fishing line when it comes down here and, and yank it. So let's get right into the question. It says my GSP starts to peel from the plug that he has it on. I bet you Bruno wouldn't mind that I mentioned his name. All the polyps are out and happy, what should I do? And I told him that GSP can be crazy and you've seen that in my 10 gallon, how great it's growing. You've also seen how so-so it's growing in my 75, but what I would recommend is if you can get the GSP to attach to a plug, and then glue the plug to a rock and just leave it alone. Let it grow off the plug and eventually it'll grow on the rock. When I redo my 20 gallon, I'll have a lot of GSP issues to handle with that. So I'm going to show you what I would do there. All right, here's day one. I just put the fish trap in. It just barely fit next to my light holder there, the bracket. If you look from this angle, that's the opening on this side here. And this is normally where they feed on this end. This is 10, 10 by, you have to go by the top if you have a rim list, eight deep, eight by eight deep. So it's quite big, but it just fit in just right. Here was a question about invasive coral. Your corals are quite close together touching in some places, but they aren't bothering each other, question mark. After many years of reef keeping, you learn to see which corals affect other corals in a negative way. If you're new to reef keeping, in most cases, if you keep like corals of the same family, they can touch and be next to each other. It's when you have to put different corals next to each other. So the best thing to do really is Google. Like there's a lot of research out there, guys, that you can just Google. Some of the euphilia have stinging tentacles that go out and sting, so you can't put them near other corals. So I put the door on. I wanted everything on there so the fish will get used to it exactly the same way. And I need to get a little more fishing line. What my plan is, because you have to pull it out the back, my plan is to get a longer fishing line. I'm gonna get down on my hands and knees and sneak in here, right? Down on the bottom. And then I'll just reach the fishing line when it comes down here and, and yank it. All right, Derail Daryl asks, He's got a, uh, it, what he thinks is a bacterial bloom in his tank. He said it's snowing in his reef tank. You have to determine whether or not it's really a bacterial bloom. Usually they occur when something dies, something large is left in there. I've had that when my, um, I can't remember now, one of my fish died. The whole tank was cloudy, but I removed him and it went away almost immediately. Sometimes it can be a change that you've made in your tank. Maybe you've taken something out of the tank. Heterotrophs got busy and they reproduce 15 to 20 times faster than the audiotrophs. There's no place for them to go because the surface area from the live rocks were now gone and they're in the water column. And that's why we see that milky haze. I also had to raise my light rack up. I used my magnets again. I just did that because the door needs enough room to fit on the top of the box and below your lights. So I had to raise that up a bit. So hopefully we'll catch that guy, the fox face. PJ Cardinal was in all the way in. See, he was in and the clown, see some of this stuff's gonna blow out. Fox face is looking at it from below. You know, he's not gonna be able to handle that the day one. See, he thinks it's coming down to him. I would say a couple days at least. Hugh mentions this. I'm cycling a 2.5 gallon quarantine frag tank and his ammonia has dropped to zero, but his nitrite and nitrate 
are still insanely high. After my nitrate gets to zero, how big of a water change should I do before adding coral? And what I mentioned to him is a two and a half gallon frag tank is really tiny. I wouldn't use anything smaller than a five to 10 gallon frag tank. And that's only if you're gonna do one or two or three frags in there. You know, a frag tank where you're preparing your frags for a larger tank, you want them to really get growing and flourish in there. So two and a half gallons might not be enough. All right, so see what I'm doing here, guys? I'm inching this nori clip. It's actually magnets that I use to hold the nori on. And the fox face has eaten it all. I'm gonna go in a little bit further with it. So see what I did here? I put it from there, just inside. Now it's not enough to close the door on him, but I want him to go in after the nori. Then if he feels comfortable with that, when I put the food down in through the hole in here, he may start to go in there. It's been three days. All right, guys. I'm sitting over in my chair, watching all this go down. Now I just put the nori on the magnet inside the trap a little bit and look at Fox face. He just wants to go in, but he won't. What a wuss. As far as the water change, once you're down to zero, I usually like to do about 50% of a water change once I've cycled, but then wait a few days, test again, to make sure your nitrite doesn't rise back up and obviously the ammonia doesn't come back. All right, I'm down on the ground here, below the tank, and he just started making his way up. Okay, he can't see me down here. Oh, Kenny, let's see. I'm down on the ground, as you could see, laying down. Ah, you sucker! Uh, I knew this was going to drive me nuts. My neck is getting stiff down here. Look at him. Ah, uh, brother. He's not going in there for food. He likes the nori, but I'm going to let him go in there and get super comfortable in there. I had bubble algae on my failed tank last year and could never get rid of it, you and me alike. Any advice on how to minimize that on my new tank? The only thing I could suggest to do on that is take the rocks out and in fresh salt water, go in there with a brush and scrape it all off and then even have a second bucket to dip in after you've scraped it all off. So you're kind of trying to rinse anything that's floating or kind of still on the rock. And I even told him in the comment that it's there's no guarantee. You know, spores are invisible almost. And when you put that new rock in your tank, it's possible that over time, bubble algae will grow back. And don't forget guys, it's almost zero chance that something isn't gonna come in your tank from what you put in it after you start adding to your tank. You may not see it on a frag, you might not see it on a fish. I mean, that's why they say quarantine is super important, but even in that respect, you still run a risk of getting something in your tank that you don't want. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna be positive. Okay, so he's going in, he's going in, he's going in. Now, I'm over by the camera right now. I'm gonna crawl down. I'm crawling now, guys, and I'm gonna lay down on the ground, doing my army crawl. Can you see me down here? I don't know if you can see me or not. But I can see from down here if he goes in there. Let's see. I think he saw me and shot away, but let's see if he goes back up. I'm completely, I don't know if you can see me, but I'm down here. <laughs> I don't know if he knows my hand or what. Let's see what happens. Oh, there he is. Okay, where's my string? He can't see me down here, there's no way. I'm concerned about vibration. Oh, can you believe it? Oh, 
Come on. <sighs> Come on. James asked, his job entails him to go away for two weeks at a time. And he was wondering uh, whether or not he should set up an ATO or not. He's not sure. And I told him, well, without a doubt, James, you probably need one. And it came at a good time, your question, actually, because I've mixed salt water down there for the 75 gallon in my fish room. And I was go going to do it last week. And what happened was I didn't get around to it, so I just let it down there. No lights, no nothing. And when I went down there and checked the salinity after one week, I went from 1.025 to 1.041. So that's a huge amount of salinity increase if you're not changing it. So picture over a two week period. So I use the Digitin ATO. I used to use the sensors but I've had a couple issues with them, not so much overflowing, but not coming on. I just was nervous about them. You put this in a low flow area in your sump or in your overflow box like this. And then, you know, you just get some kind of a container. Uh, the more water you can fit in it, the better, because then you don't have to change it so much. So I put that in here. The Digitin comes with a pump. Now I'm feeding both my six gallon and my 10 gallon with this. I put a little calc wasser in there too. And that's been helping my digitata quite a bit. See how it's growing a little bit on the tips when you have the white tips, that means it's growing. So I put a little bit of calc wasser in there, a teaspoon for every two gallons. You need some form of evaporation water to put back in your tank while you're gone. He hasn't eaten either. He hasn't eaten regular food in like four days. All I've been doing is putting the nori in there. He won't go in at all with regular meaty food in there. I'm not moving down here. He can't, there's no way he can see me down here. Yeah! <sighs> Woo -hoo! Oh man. I feel a little bad now, you know? But it's been all week I've been trying to get him. You know what I mean? I'm gonna home him with Fish Guy Mike. So yeah, you know, it's just one of those things. Look at that thing back there. You know, now it's getting all algae all over it. So anyway, hopefully by next week, I'll have it caught and I'll show you. And I don't know what I'm going to do for next week, but keep the questions coming and have a great week. I'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Guys, it's after the video. I caught him.